Hello everyone, welcome, we're live. Uh, you might have the wrong titles on this stream, which is utterly my fault, uh, but if you do have the wrong titles, it's not a DJ set from me today, uh, or a Thor Tuesday Tips or anything else. It's Thursday Q&A Live with me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. And welcome, it's our chance once a week to hang out together and to help you with your DJing and DJ producing. Any questions you might have, about gear, music, techniques, playing out, promoting yourself, all the stuff that we cover in our book, Rock the DJ, the five big areas of DJing. Gear is the geeky stuff. Music, of course, is the tools of the trade. Techniques is actually what you do on the gear. Uh, playing out and promoting yourself. The DJ controller I've got set up here today is the little Reloop Ready, which means we're using Serato software, uh, although that's not Serato software. That is, uh, and so maybe you've got questions about that, uh, but whatever it is, we're here to help you. And as always, this is about you. It's not really about uh, anything other than helping you out with what you need help with. So a lot of the time is gonna be spent sat right here, which is where I can, we call it the comment cam, is where I can see all the cameras. So if you enjoy this as ever, we'd love you to subscribe. We'd love you to click the bell if you're on YouTube, uh, to click share wherever you are and help us spread the word. That's what we ask in return for doing this. And hopefully we can hang around for the next hour and we can all learn something, me included. Uh, so let's uh, say a few early hellos to people who are joining us. Uh, so hi to uh, X Cosa in Australia, uh, staying up late for us. Hi to Paul and GM and Ray, uh, Martin uh, in a windy UK. It's quite windy here in Gibraltar actually today. Gibraltar is full of flights arriving from the UK because it's one of the few places on the green list, which means you're allowed to travel to it. So we've got loads of people holidaying, wandering around thinking, what do I do next? Um, so yeah, we're busy here, uh, but it's quite windy today out there. Um, yes, Craig, thank you. We know we got the wrong title. It's, uh, it's totally my fault. I'm not gonna claim that anyone else was responsible for that error. Uh, hello, uh, X Cosa uh, is uh, saying hello to Mixmaster G, who is one of our regulars, who's also the uh, person behind the excellent DJCU and DCU programs that let you convert your library between different software and different DJ systems. So hi to you, hi to Housemaster J and DJ Fuzz. Uh, Modish Mark says, hi Phil, great subwoofer tips the other day. I recently got a mini rig sub for my portable setup. That thing kicks. I'd recommend it to anyone looking for a sub for practice. So mini rigs are the tiny little speakers that we recommend. And yes, you're right, they have a sub, uh, which gives you that, uh, gives you that extra thump that you can't get out of a tiny speaker. Hi to uh, UK Spin. Uh, so hi to Naveen and uh, to Philip over there in Belgium and to Kima in Brighton. Uh, I'm gonna try and get that camera a little bit more zoomed in to me. It's worse. To figure out how to have this working. Yeah, that's a bit better. Figure out how to get this to autofocus or something. Uh, hello to Sean in a rainy Dublin. Uh, that is worse. I don't know folks, setting it all up live. Well, at least you know I'm live, right? because I wouldn't be doing this on a recording. Uh, hello to Earl Whiff. We actually did do a recording on Tuesday because I couldn't be here for Tuesday Tips, but no, we're definitely live here today. Uh, hello to uh, Driver. John says it's raining there in England. Uh, so, Christopher in Malta, I was just talking about Malta actually, uh, says, what's your opinion on Eurovision and some of your favorite contestants? So with apologies to our people watching this in the United States, Eurovision is a bit of an institution in the UK. Uh, and in every country of Europe. And it's uh, where bands uh, have uh, sometimes started their careers. ABBA, for instance, uh, Waterloo by ABBA, won the Eurovision Song Contest and ABBA went on to have that great career. So it's basically every country in Europe enters a song every year and then they all vote on each other's songs and there's a big show, I think it's actually tonight. My view on Eurovision, part of the fabric, my friend. Can't miss it, uh, but... Uh, I don't think as far as DJs are concerned, there's too much for us to talk about there. Um, DJ2AM says, hi Phil, school all finished now. Yes, I know that you're a college person. Uh, my XDJ XZ I ordered from Bot DJ is coming later in June. The delivery wait times are so annoying. Do you think it's because of COVID? Yeah, the, the lead times on a lot of DJ gear are worse than they have been in the past and it is, like you say, completely because of COVID. So just the way it is. Um, so Driver John ended up buying the book I mentioned, Beyond Beat, Beyond Beat Matching. It mentions white noise. What is white noise? So Beyond Beat Matching is a book that I have here actually, for those of you that might be interested in what we're talking about, on the Digital DJ Tips bookshelf somewhere. Uh, it's a song by my friend Yakov uh, Vorobiev, who is the person behind uh, the um, 
first person behind the uh, mixing key software. Uh, and Beyond Beat Mixing is a great book. You don't actually have to buy it. Uh, you can just read it on the mixing key website. Uh, but it's a good little book on basically how um, to move, as it says, beyond beat matching. Obviously, he talks a bit about mixed in key, which is his software. Um, and white noise, I don't know why he mentions white noise in there, but basically white noise is just, you know when you tune a radio in, if anyone remembers tuning in radios back before presets and digital audio, uh, the noise between the stations, that kind of white hiss, that's white noise. There's different types, there's pink noise as well and stuff, but white noise is basically hiss. It's uh, random, random noise is the best way of putting it. So ah, I don't know why Jakob was talking about white noise in that book. It's a long time since I've read it, but that's what it is anyway. Uh, so hello to John on the Costa, Costa del Sol, not so far from us down here in Gibraltar. Hello to our regular Dr. Karen there, uh, to Alec down there in South Africa. Um, and um, someone's just bigging me up. Uh, you can do as much of that as you want. Uh, I love it when you big me up, <laughs> so to speak. Jonas says, hi, Phil. Always an inspiration with your Q&A sessions. It's nice spring weather here in Karlstad, Sweden. Good to know that. Uh, Steve is just giving some, uh, some props for the, uh, the reloop controller that we've got here. Um, I'm actually planning on doing some live streaming with uh, this one here, the reloop buddy. Uh, I'm planning on, this is doing my head in this, uh, this focus. I want to fix it for the next one. That's a bit better. Uh, the Reloop Buddy, this little one here. Um, I'm planning on uh, trying it for some of my balcony beats because I can fit it with an iPad in a bag. It takes even less room than the, the Prime Go that I'm currently using. But yeah, they're good, these little controllers. Um, Peter, it's your end, not ours. Uh, hello to Lashon uh, in Denver, Colorado, which is also where Lauren, our social media person, lives. So you're in good company there. Uh, hi to DJ Nick T. Uh, so DJ 2AM is really, really excited about this XDJ XZ or XDJ XZ. Um, when I get it uh, and the VM80s, are the speakers good enough to take for parties? No, you don't. You shouldn't use speakers like that at parties. Uh, you should use speak, either PA speakers or pit speakers designed for parties. Don't use speakers. Don't use near field monitor speakers for parties. You're very likely to blow them up. Um, Chris, uh, hi Phil, I'm feeling rusty as I haven't DJed in over a year. Any tips to get my arse in gear for a wedding in June? Yeah, start talking to the couple, uh, find out what music they want, start collecting that music and start, you know, start to assemble the music and start to get your playlists together. Have a dry run of the music, set your gear up and break your gear down so you know what you're doing. Sort out your backup source. What are you going to do if the music goes down? Um, basically, you know, imagine you were going on a camping trip. You'd, you'd learn how to put your tent up and take it down before uh, you went, right? Do all that stuff. So, you know, in the book, we talk about those five big areas of DJing. Gear is the technical stuff. Do you know all the technical stuff? How everything plugs in, how everything breaks down, what you'll do if, if something goes wrong electrically, how you change fuses, all that kind of thing. The music, get the music right for the wedding. Make sure you've got all the music you need. Uh, the techniques, practice your DJing. How are you going to get between the, all the genres you've got to play in the wedding? Uh, playing out. What do you need to actually perform that gig? Do you want to practice your microphone skills? Have you got a microphone? Is that stuff you can be working on? Uh, and promoting yourself. When you get to the wedding, what are you going to do to get people at that wedding to say, wow, that's a good DJ. I want to book him or her for my wedding. Oh, I'm talking to everyone here, Chris. Uh, and uh, so, you know, think about all those areas of DJing. And by the way, you know, I talk about the book a lot, but that's because it is our blueprint for how to DJ. Uh, and I've uh, got to tell you that if you want to get a copy of it, it's really simple. Head over to the Digital DJ Tips website, click on the book at the top, uh, and you can read it here. This is the book I talk about. You can buy it on Amazon, uh, but you can read it here as well. You also get it for Kindle and audiobook and all that kind of thing, uh, and it's all here. Uh, so you can not only read the book, but you can get all the videos and stuff that we talk about in the book uh, as part of the, uh, the online version, which of course in the book, we can't embed videos directly in a book, but they're all here in the online version. You can also download a PDF of the book from here. So do go and get that book. It's helped tens of thousands of DJs uh, to, uh, to brush up on their skills or get back into it when they're not, uh, not fresh. So have a go. Uh, thanks for that, Chris. Alang says, I have a Mixars Duo and the faders are bleeding top and bottom. Can I replace them with inner faders? I don't think so easily. No, try some contact cleaner. That might give you a little bit more uh, life in those faders. Uh, so Craig just got a DVD external drive um, and wants to rip loads of CDs from the sofa. It lights up but it's not visible on Windows. You probably haven't got the right driver, Craig. Just go and dig into whether you need a driver for that. 
Uh, so DJ Roadrunner has just bought Pioneer DJ's uh, DJM S7 mixer and dices, and needs help to learn the mixer. Getting it tomorrow. Well, look, the DJM S7 mixer is, 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 is a DJ mixer, but it also has the, the Serato functionality. So plug it into Serato, and the first thing you want to do is just work through that manual um, line by line. You know, we've got a review of the mixer, uh, which should be a great place to start as well. Uh, to get to our review of the mixer, just head over to Digital DJ Tips online uh, and type in DJM S7. Click the little, uh, click the little icon at the top there uh, and type in DJM S7 and then you'll come to our uh, review of it here uh, and we talk a lot about it in there. Uh, so you get a lot of tips from this. There's also a video linked there uh, that reveals uh, some of the special functions of it. There's also an all you need to know post there as well. Uh, so lots of stuff to get you excited about your mixer uh, here. So you go and have a read of some of that stuff uh, and watch the videos. That should get you up to speed. But yeah, I bet you're really excited about your mixer arriving, aren't you? I hope you enjoy it, DJ Roadrunner. Uh, so Ian says chip shortage is what's causing huge problems with DJ gear. My dealer tells me he can't get a CDJ 3000 for love nor money at the moment. Not only DJ gear, but all kinds of electronic gear. Yeah, chip shortage. I've heard that too. Uh, Darren says I'm blessed. My Pioneer XDJ XZ, they have one for me already put away and I'm, I'm paying off lumps. So I'll have it in around six weeks. Well, but you can't wait, can you? Uh, hello to Lou over there in Florida. Uh, white Privilege says, white noise sounds like the smoke machine firing. Yeah, that's a really good uh, description of it. Thank you for that. Uh, Chateau Stokes, your first time here, so welcome. Uh, DJ Woods always looks forward to these Q&A days, so I'm glad about that. Uh, wherever you're watching this, by the way, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, uh, wherever you're watching, uh, welcome. Uh, we're on Mixcloud Live as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it's just good to have you here. So thank you uh, very much. Um, Let's keep the questions coming. I'm just glancing at my wonderful team who are correcting my errors on YouTube and Facebook going live with the wrong, uh, with the wrong title. Uh, although I'm going to have to change the, uh, the broadcast in Facebook groups afterwards because uh, I just am. So if you're watching one of our Facebook groups, Student Live or Global DJ Network, this isn't Tuesday Tips Live. We know it's Thursday Q&A Live. It's all my mistake. Um, I pressed the buttons in the wrong order when I went live. Uh, so Craig says, I, uh, I need to read that book beyond beat matching, but right now I'm going through DJing for dummies. Because of COVID, I've had it on loan from the library since 2019. Good man. Uh, yeah. Um, us, us, us book writers in the DJ world, we all know each other. As some of you know, I was the editor of the DJing for dummies book, and I'm a good friend of Yakov who wrote beat, uh, beyond beat matching. So yeah, we're all, we're all friends. We all know each other. Uh, so Khalid says, what other books do you recommend for beginners? Well, obviously our book, which I've just shown you. Uh, also, I love the books by, um, um, uh, I'm just trying to think of the name of the books now. The DJ Revolution is, re the DJ Revolutionaries is one. How to DJ Write is another book, another book by my friend Bill. Um, they're very good. They're very old now, but they are good. DJ Revolution is, is, is a, um, an interviews book and how to DJ write or how to DJ properly, as they call it, in the UK uh, is a, an, another very, very old book on how to DJ. It's like 20 years old, maybe 30 years old now, but it is very funny. You'll enjoy it. Uh, apparently I look like I have a bit of a tan. Yeah, it's because I've um, been running around the Rock of Gibraltar and it's very sunny here. Uh, hi to my friend DJ Kluby. Um, Jillster11 says, do you reckon Tractor will add the other streaming services like Tidal in the future? Good question. I don't know. I think they probably will, yeah. Um, White Privilege Cat says, I think I will sell my DJ 1000 for the Reloop Buddy. What, do you want some, uh, you want some DJ gear that you can take anywhere with you, right? Um, well, why not? There's the little, DJ, that's the little Reloop Buddy there we've got set up. If you've got any questions about this, I can, uh, I can help you with those today. Uh, so, are you still using Larix Broadcaster when you're streaming your Balcony Beats, says Jonas. So, for those of you that don't know what Larix Broadcaster is, it's a piece of software that you can install on your phone, like on here, uh, and it lets you go live on any any network network you want. So you could go live on on Facebook from it. Not that I would go live on Facebook if I was DJ live streaming because you get cut off. Uh, it lets you go live on Mixcloud or Twitch or YouTube. It gets around the YouTube thing where you've got to have a thousand subscribers before you can go live. For instance. Uh, this is Larix Broadcaster. 
Uh, so uh, you can get it for both Android and for iOS. Uh, it's a very, and they've just added overlays as well, so you can have your titles and stuff on this too now. Uh, it's a great piece of software, a great little app for your phone. Um, no, I don't use it personally. The reason I don't use it personally is I use a system called, um, uh, a system called uh, Mevo, M-E-V-O. And in fact, I've got the Mevo box here because they've just launched a three pack. So this is the Mevo three pack. So these are little cameras which you can uh, plug in and they work off your Wi-Fi network. So basically you don't need to wire these in. They just, they just talk to your Wi-Fi network and then you control them on your phone. Uh, but it means that as long as you've got a router, uh, you can go live on the internet without a computer at all. Uh, I'm really looking forward to testing this because I've only ever used one of these and this three pack arrived this week. Uh, and I'm going to be plugging all three in on my next live stream and having a close-up camera and a camera where you can look at the view and also a camera on me. Um, and all controlled from my phone with no computer anywhere near and with overlays and things like that. So the Mevo uh, Start is a really uh, interesting system. That's $999 for three cameras there. And what you can do with that is great value if you're serious about live streaming, of course. So that's what I use currently, uh, which is why I'm thinking about using it with this as I was telling you about, because this plus an iPad, plus my phone for comments, plus those three Mevo cameras will all fit in a tiny backpack. Uh, and in July and August, Digital DJ Tips is officially going on the road. Uh, I'm gonna be um, touring in a camper van with my family uh, and taking a couple of months of, uh, of, of, of working like a digital nomad with a laptop um, or rather with an iPad. And um, so I don't wanna take, take a laptop with me at all. And so, yeah, I'm planning a little system uh, that will allow me to live stream from all the weird and wonderful places that we end up in uh, as a family. Uh, so yeah, it might work, it might not. I'm testing it all at the moment. Uh, so that's what's coming up. So yeah, so no, I don't use it anymore, but I do thoroughly recommend Larix Broadcaster uh, for that. I think there's a piece of software called Prism. Am I right? Someone tell me. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's um, I'm just trying to find it now. Uh, Prism Live Studio, it's called, here it is. Uh, which I've heard a lot of very good things about. Uh, so uh, this is another one that we're going to look at at some point, but lots of people have said that they like this pr Prism software. Uh, obviously, Teja Dilip isn't so pleased with it, but uh, hey, you always got those one-star reviews, don't you? Uh, so we're going to take a look at this Prism software. I think this is for iOS and Android as well um, at some point. Uh, it does the same thing, but the Larix one that I've just showed you is, is the one we currently recommend. So DJ Zan says, hey, Phil, I'm getting my first gig soon. It may be uh, at my school, but we have to start somewhere. I did my first DJ gigs at my school uh, and look where it got me, so good on you. Uh, DJ Mark IV, I've been mixing for four years now. Uh, how can I get playing at venues and events? Is there a specific way to do so? Thanks. Uh, I also have the DDJ 400. What shall I upgrade to next? Right, let's do the questions in reverse order. Upgrade to the DDJ 800 or the DDJ 1000. Uh, as far as getting gigs, uh, you the best thing to do is put on your own event. Get a very small venue that holds 20, 30 people uh, and make sure that your friends and their friends come to that gig that you put on in that venue. Um, get the venue for free, tell them you'll fill it on a, on a Thursday night or something. Uh, and then once you've done that, uh, do another one and then do another one. And then your, um, your name will get out there that way and you will get the experience you need to then do a good job when you play at events. Uh, where other people book you, but you can't expect to go from bedroom to being booked. You need to get out there yourself on your own steam and do it yourself first. Uh, but literally, if you can get 20 people to come into a venue that holds 30 people, that's a good start. So that's the best way of doing it. Uh, Paul says, I just bought the CDM 4000 a week ago. I'm new to doing this. I'm still having some trouble with beat matching. Well, maybe the track speeds with ear only. Well, look, beat matching is a bit like driving, uh, like riding a bike. Uh, it's one of those things you just have to practice and then it suddenly all clicks. So we do have some tutorials on beat matching in Digital DJ Tips. Again, go to the website and type into the search box to find those. Uh, and uh, I hope they help you, but uh, I'm excited for you. You know, it's a good place to be right at the beginning of your journey. Um, any insight, says LaShawn, on a new all-in-one player from Pioneer that will have similar technology to the Prime 4 and indeed the Prime 2, the Prime Go and the SC5000 and 6000 players from Denon DJ that have engine software? No, I haven't heard anything about that. So we're just going to have to hope that uh, there's something nice to tell you about that at some point soon. 
Uh, what type of speakers to invest into practice if I'm a beginner? Uh, so Mark, this is a good question. So it depends how much money you've got really. Uh, the kind of speakers that work are the speakers you've already got. If you've got a speaker that's got a line in socket, in other words, it's got somewhere you can plug a wire in, uh, it will probably work. Now the caveat here is a lot of those, you know, beer can Bluetooth speakers, even the ones with line in sockets, have a bit of a delay on the audio, a bit like on my voice now, because that's part of this software, there's always this bit of delay, um, which is okay, you can put up with it, apart from when you try and beat match, match on headphones because it does your head in, because your headphones sound different to what's coming out of the speaker. So you really want something where there's, it's called no latency, where literally the sound is coming out of the speaker at the same time as it's coming out of your headphones. Um, so, but other than that, if you've got a home cinema surround system, if you've got a, an old hi-fi, if you've got a speaker that, ha that, that you can plug into and that's, that's got no latency on it, that will do. The speakers you've already got, you just need to get them near to you for DJ practice. If you're gonna go and invest in speakers, if you haven't got very much money, the ones I would recommend you go for every single time are go to your local electrical outlet, you know, the same place that sells washing machines and all that kind of stuff, and get yourself a nice pair of mid-range computer speakers. The 2.1 speakers, I've got two like this and a, and, a, and a subwoofer you can tuck underneath your desk, you know, for... for $50, you can get something there that'll sound really good. And if you're, if you're on a budget, that's a great start. And the next thing to do is to upgrade to uh, the kind of speakers like the ones I've got behind me here. You know, you can just see a little corner of that there, the kind of KRK speakers. This kind of style of monitors are about $150 each. So for a pair of those, you're looking at $300 and then you add the subwoofer, it's another $500. So it starts to get expensive. You can do it in bits. Um, so, you know, hopefully there's some advice there, depending on your budget, that'll help you there, Mark. Listen, people, uh, two things I want you to do. Get onto, the, um, get onto the subscribe to the page or subscribe to the channel and click that thing. Uh, click the show our posts first on Facebook or the bell on YouTube in order to be informed when we go live with these things. And please, wherever you are, hit the share, the like, all that stuff. It really helps us to do these things. Um, and uh, we would appreciate that. Uh, so if you've just joined us, by the way, it's Thursday Q&A Live with me, Phil Morse, here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio. Despite what it might say on your title, especially if you're in one of our Facebook groups, uh, it's not the Tuesday Tips Live, it's Thursday Q&A. I do know what day it is. It was my mistake that the wrong title went out there. Uh, the, uh, can the iPad work with the Pioneer DDJ400, says George? I think it can. I think the DDJ400 is class compliant, which means it works with the iPad. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, and I think that will then work with Algorithms, uh, Algorithms um, DJ Pro AI software. I think you probably need what's called the camera connection kit, unless the iPad you've got is one of the iPad Pros with the USB-C socket, in which case I think you can just use it straight. This is all I think stuff. I haven't tested it recently, but I'm pretty sure that it can and that's how it works. Um, so, how do you use Rekordbox with the CDJ 3000s? Two ways. You export your music to USB drive and plug that into the, into the CDJ 3000s. As long as they're networked together, you can just DJ across them all like that. Or you plug the laptop in and you can use the laptop in two ways. The laptop can work basically as a library. Uh, so you're still using the CDJ 3000s for everything. You're just using the laptop like a glorified USB drive. Or you can use uh, the laptop is DJ software and you can control the DJ software with the CDJ 3000 setup. It's up to you how you use it, but that's how it works. Uh, the next live question uh, is just James. It's not a question, but James is ready to soak up some knowledge. So glad about that. James, uh, what's it like to mix with the crossfader on the XDJXZ? Yeah, it's cool. You really are looking forward to this controller, aren't you? Uh, you really are looking forward to it. Is it like the MagSafe one? No, it's not quite as good. It's more like a, a standard Pioneer. Uh, a crossfader, but it's a good crossfader, don't worry about it, you'll, you'll like it. Um, I'm trying to use Rekordbox with my laptop, says Lucas, but it won't allow me to use iTunes. So it won't allow you to use your Apple Music music in iTunes. So if you're subscribed to Apple Music, you can't play that music, uh, but it should allow you to play your local files. Let us know if that's the thing. Uh, Melanie says, hi Phil, on Rekordbox, uh, the key is shown uh, when you look at the melodic wheel, so you mean the Camelot wheel, it has keys in there. Anyway, to set up Rekordbox to give you those without retyping it, yeah, so in Rekordbox there is a way 
of saying I want to use, it's called Camelot key system. Uh, and you go into the settings in Rekordbox. We can probably have a look at that together now. Let's just head over to the laptop and I'll get Rekordbox uh, started up here on the laptop. And we'll have a look together and see if we can find out uh, where in Rekordbox you change the key. I'm pretty sure you can, uh, but I can't remember exactly where it is. So let's, uh, let's have a look together in Rekordbox and see if we can't do that. Uh, here we go, I've got record box here, so uh, let's have a look, get it on the screen. So you're gonna head into the settings and you're gonna look for, uh, I think it could be in analysis, no, that's a key thing there, but that's not it. It could be in one of the display views, so it could be here somewhere. Uh, I'm just looking for the key, there we go, key display. Classic or alphanumeric, right? So we want to set key display. So just to let you know again, preferences, view, go down to key display and don't have it on classic. So I've just changed it to classic and in the far right hand corner of the screen, you can see my keys uh, are now under BPM, literally on the far right hand corner of the screen. My keys are all now D minor, G minor, E minor, E minor. If I change that to alphanumeric, they're now all in the Camelot system, 7A, 6A, 9A, and so on. And that's what you wanted. You wanted the ability to be able to do that. So that's how you do it. Uh, and if you don't know what any of this means, by the way, people, uh, the Camelot system is a way of, uh, of knowing the musical key of your tracks without having to uh, look at anything uh, musical at all. So um, the Camelot wheel looks a little bit like this. I'll get it up on the screen for you and show you. Uh, this is uh, mixed in key who kind of trumpeted, uh, trumpeted, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, pioneered all this stuff. That's the Camelot wheel there. Uh, and it's a way of representing musical key in letters and numbers. You can see we've got these numbers here, 8A, 9A, 9B, 10B. Uh, and uh, that's what I was just showing you on record box here. Uh, so over here on the record box down in the right hand corner, uh, you can see that 7A, 6A, 9A and all that. Uh, and that is how to get those switched on in record box. It's a nice way of mixing because you don't have to know anything about musical key to spot tracks which you'll mix with each other. Anyway, I haven't got time to go into how that all works now, but that's what uh, Melanie was asking there. So Melanie, I hope that's helpful to you. It's what we're here for. Uh, Darren is just worried and upset and sad because Darren has got an ear infection uh, and it's ruptured his inner eardrum, his eardrum, but he's uh, still able to DJ with one ear. Well, there you go. There's a, uh, there's, a, there's a silver lining to the cloud, but I hope it improves soon, my friend. Uh, what is the difference between the BPM subscriptions? I don't know, actually. Jermaine, if someone can help Jermaine. Jermaine is on uh, YouTube uh, about that. I didn't think they had more than one subscription. Um, DJ Roadrunner says, I need to do a course. I'm not sure which one to do is I want to learn the software Serato and the S7 mixer. I joined up for the $1 course. Okay, this is all uh, something we can have a little chat about if you're uh, thinking about taking a course with us. So you joined up for the $1 program, uh, which is awesome. This is our digital DJ tips, uh, DJ lab, uh, which is uh, now not uh, open for a dollar anymore. So you were, uh, you were you were lucky to jump in on that. Uh, this is Digital DJ Lab, right down at the bottom of all our courses. Digital DJ Lab is an ongoing program. Uh, it's almost like the Netflix for DJs. It's got hundreds of lessons in it for a fixed monthly fee. Uh, but this is designed to complement our courses. So if you want to learn your S7, look, your S7 is a mixer, uh, but all it does is control digital DJ software. And in the case of the S7, it controls Serato. So the course I would recommend for you, if you just want to learn everything about how to use that software to its highest potential is Serato Made Easy. And this is Serato Made Easy. It's an awesome course that'll teach you everything you need to know about that software. It seems like you're quite technical DJ Roadrunner and you want to know all the ins and outs. So this combined with the stuff I've already recommended to you for free about your S7 should teach you uh, about Serato. Uh, but that said, um, if you want just general DJing stuff, the course we always recommend to everyone because because it is easily our best-selling course, is the Complete DJ course here. Uh, this is the one that will teach you basically everything about those five areas of DJing that we write about in our book and that I talk to you about. Gear, music, techniques, playing out, and promoting yourself. So the Complete DJ course for the big picture, Serato made easy for your software, uh, and the Digital DJ Lab program that you're in complements all of this. So I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you decide to stick around in it. Uh, right. Let's push on with the questions. Uh, so for flight, for, for flight cases, asks Danny, 
Uh, sliding tray type or low profile type with a stand, they're both good. It just depends on uh, on what you on what on what you prefer the look of. I think really, Danny. So there's no there's no right answer uh, to that one. Uh, the Fubar. I'm going to cut and paste this. Uh, hello to you over there on Twitch. I'm going to literally screen grab this and send it to my friend Danny at Mix Cloud, who I was literally chatting to uh, 40 minutes ago uh, about this very thing. Uh, so I'm literally uh, on Mix Cloud uh, on my email now, uh, and I'm uh, sending what you just said. I'm sending the screen. Uh, sorry, my friend Bobby at Mix Cloud. I'm sending the. Uh, the screen grab uh, directly to Bobby right now um, uh, so he can see that this is a live concern of yours. So for those of you that don't mix, um, I'm just typing the email now, see what I mean Bobby? Smiley face. So thank you very much for, uh, I called him Booby then, don't think he'd have liked being called Booby. Uh, so he knows that this is a live concern. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know what this is all about, uh, we are actually currently um, live using a service called Restream. Uh, you might be watching this on Twitch, on Mixcloud, on Facebook, on YouTube, but we're not broadcasting to any of those places. We're broadcasting to something called Restream, which I actually accidentally showed you uh, a little while ago. Uh, so Restream looks like this. Let me go cut to Restream now and show you. See, you can see me chatting away there on Restream, totally out of sync with this because it's about 20 seconds behind. So what Restream does is let us go live on, now you can suddenly see that uh, we've got Restream because uh, it's now live and it's gonna go, it's gonna do that mirror thing, that never ending mirror thing now here. But anyway, all down this left hand side are all the services we're currently live on, you see? Uh, and so uh, what happens is that uh, from this one platform, I can go live on any, combination of places and we're live on Twitch and YouTube and, and Facebook and all that. Uh, and the problem is that uh, I can't get the chat from Mixcloud on the screen. So I can't put the comment on the screen there like, like I did with the Fuba there from uh, Twitch. I can't do that with comments from Mixcloud. Um, and also I can't do other things integrated with Mixcloud. And you're saying, when is it gonna be integrated? So I was talking to them about that today uh, and uh, I've just made it clear that we think this is important for us paying Mixcloud users to have that. So thank you for that, the FUBAR. Uh, and I can tell you now, I've passed your comment directly to the Mixcloud team as we were speaking. Uh, so we are, um, we're, doing, we're doing that work for you. Uh, so Tyler, I'm looking at taking a series of Ableton DJing courses from Ableton certified trainer, Josh, Bess to learn DJing in Ableton. Do you think it might be better to make mixtapes by DJing directly in Ableton? No, Tyler, I think the best way to make mixtapes is to make the mixtapes and just edit out any errors the way that we teach it. You lose all the spontaneity and all the fun and all, frankly, the liveness of doing it in, uh, in um, software if you do it in Ableton. A lot of DJs make radio shows in Ableton, but for me, nah, I don't think it's, uh, it's a good thing at all. Uh, it's just my personal view on it. Uh, our, our, our Pro Mixtape Formula course teaches you how to do your mixtapes the way you always do them on your DJ controller, uh, but then how to correct the errors afterwards by editing them in something like Audacity, which is very quick, it's very easy, and you end up with a great sounding tape, but you actually mixed all those tunes together in the way you normally DJ. So that's the way I would recommend it. Uh, Andy recommends the Little M audio speakers for practice. Yeah, we've reviewed them, they're, they're good as well. Uh, would a mix mini rig sub be appropriate to use with them? I don't think so, no. Um, the mini rig sub is really best paired with li mini rigs little speakers. Um, so mm, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't pair those. I don't think it's really big enough to make a massive amount of difference. Uh, Lou says, I know you've mentioned earplugs before on Q&A that you can use to protect your ears. Can you please give me a name and a brand? Uh, I can indeed. The name and the brand is Etymotic. This is the best, uh, the best kind of like ones to start with because they're about $15 uh, and they're pretty good. Uh, so let me find you what they look like on Amazon. Uh, this is the Etym Etymotic uh, earplugs. Whoops, that's not Amazon at all. That is though. Um, they look like this. Uh, and the good thing about these is the way they're made is they've got a little hole in the middle. I'm wondering if one of these pictures will show you a little hole in the middle. It doesn't look like it will. Maybe a bit further down it will. Oh yeah, you see on this picture here, see that hole in the middle there? It looks like a syringe or a tube. That is actually literally a hole up the middle of the headphones. So what these do is go snugly in your ear 
and then they allow you to hear the, all the audio but just quieter and you can see in the picture there they're almost invisible when they're in as opposed to the kind of foam earplugs which just make everything muffled so if you wear these in the DJ booth what happens is that it just makes everything quieter uh, and you can still hear what's going on they take a bit of getting used to uh, but look at 15 14 15 dollars uh, they've got to be a good uh, they've got to be a good effort right um, 14 dollars there uh, and I'm on amazon.com I, I would go on amazon uh, or a local shop to buy them for for where I am of course if you're watching this in the states you know it's going to be free delivery uh, but Etymotic ER20 is a good one to start with you know when you get really serious about this you can get them custom made for your ears and stuff but that's the best way uh, to start uh, Clay says DJ for dummies has been on my bookshelf for years I got a kick out of hearing that Phil worked on that book I worked on the latest version of it which actually is about seven years old now um, yeah so you well you can see that my name is on the front of it uh, great book DJ for dummies I was going to hold it up but it's not within reach actually it is within reach it's out of date now. Uh, it's out of date now, this book. But uh, there we go. There's me tucked in the bottom corner there. Consulting editor, Phil Morse. Uh, my friend John wrote this book. Uh, it's a very, very good book. It's just, as I say, it's, it's out of date now. But who knows? Maybe John will work on an up-to-date version soon. Um, so Noel says, Hi, Phil. I've recently joined the Pioneer DJ and Recordbox Facebook page. It's great for asking the community for tips on using the equipment and software, and it's not over-regulated either, so it's good for friendly banter. Cool. That's good to know, Noel, over there on Facebook. I just want to say hello to a few of our friends over on Mixcloud. Uh, hello to Griffin. Uh, hello to DJ Manico, uh, who's in Brooklyn. Uh, to Cheeky Belzebub, who says, Afternoon, Phil. And to Nell Ferns over there in Montreal as well. Uh, we hear you, Miss Cloud family. Thank you for being with us. Um, so it's a me, DJ Mario, says I had my first DJ gig back this weekend. I wasn't able to use my new turntables and mixer. Um, my phase had no sound. I had to pull the plug on my setup and use my backup Newmark NV. I was so excited to use my new gear. I was sorry to hear that, but you were clever to have a backup, weren't you? Uh, and I hope you get it sorted out. Um, do you think Serato will have stems soon, says StretchBX over there on Twitch. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they'll have them soon, frankly, because nothing happens quickly in Serato world. They're all about stability and getting it right. You know, when Serato introduce features, they tend to work well and they tend to work first time. But I don't think it'll be soon, frankly. Uh, DJ Midnight, been watching your tips for a while now. I appreciate what you do. It helps so much. Keep up the great content. Oh, thank you very much for that. Uh, when is the Mevo review coming, says DJ Woods 21 It's already happened. Uh, we've reviewed the Mevo. So the Mevo is a little camera that we were just talking about. So if you're interested in uh, seeing our review on the Mevo, again, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website. Uh, type into the top corner Mevo. Uh, not there, actually. There. M-E-V-O. And you'll see our review on that little camera that I was talking to you about, uh, the live streaming camera here. Uh, which we're very fond of. We like this little Mevo camera. Uh, there's a video review there as well, but I will be reviewing the, the multi-stream camera using more of one of these, more than one of these, uh, as soon as uh, I've had a chance to play with it. Uh, but I do love these little cameras. They're just, uh, they're really, really cool. Because what I don't like is live streaming with a, with a laptop nearby. Because you know, I spend all my waking days staring at a computer. Uh, I don't want to do it at the weekend and in the evenings and when I'm DJing. So, uh, so yeah. Um, uh, can I use Bluetooth headphones? Uh, no, don't use Bluetooth headphones for DJing at all. There's, 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 what's, there's, what, there's what is called latency, uh, which means that you get the audio a little bit later than you should. So they're a no-go. Um, so uh, let's grab one or two more live questions. Then I'm just scrolling along. Bailey says, does anyone use a Windows laptop to DJ? And if so, which one? Uh, the Windows laptop we recommend, and we have a review coming of it soon, although my friend Pre Yonjoni has already done a good video review on this, uh, is this one, the XMG laptop. Uh, this is a DJ laptop, and it's not a Mac. Uh, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, you can get this in Europe really easily. Just Google XMG laptop. Not so easy to get stateside at the moment. Uh, and the good thing about it is it's fully supported by the company for DJs. So if you have issues and you want to get it set up right, so I'm just trying to put it away again there. Uh, you want to get it set up right and stuff, they're, they're there to help you. The people who run the support are DJs themselves. So it's a bit like buying a laptop from someone like DJ Tech Tools when they've made it, if you know what I mean. It's nothing to do with DJ Tech Tools, by the way, but 
You know, when you buy gear from DJ Tech Tools, you know you're getting it from a DJ store. When you buy that Windows laptop from XMG, you know you're getting it from people who are uh, dedicated to DJ as opposed to just selling you a laptop that, uh, um, you know, is for everything. That said, if you can't get it, the, the, the Dell laptops are the range we would recommend just because they are the most vanilla laptops, uh, which means uh, that you, that you get less bloat on them and they're easier to set up uh, than some of the other brands. So I would recommend you, you go and have a look at Dell laptops if you are uh, unable to get an XMG one. But you know, the thing with laptops is, uh, you, what you want is vanilla installs. You don't want all the crap that comes with laptops when you're DJing. You just want the nice, simple, uh, vanilla install of the of the operating system uh, with no rubbish on it. Uh, and you wanna just keep it simple because that's the stuff that trips up DJs, uh, you know, who have got laptops with all this stuff running in the background uh, that kind of messes up uh, the simple laptop that they need for DJing, right? So uh, really a Dell one with everything that you don't need taken off, it would be my, be my second recommendation. But you have reminded me that we do need to do some more, more, more Windows stuff. We haven't done some for a while, so we will. Um, Ian says, with iTunes going high res, this is the news that iTunes has got high res audio, uh, will they let us live stream, uh, stream with it, like put it in DJ software? I've got no word about that. I don't think it's coming anytime soon. I really don't. Um, so here's a good question from Ray, uh, who says, do you have a recommendation or source for speaker placement for venues? Uh, I like to see what others recommend for speaker and sub placement when playing out. I have my way, but it doesn't mean it's the best. So in, in, our, um, in our mobile DJ blueprint course, which is available uh, to teach you how to set up a mobile DJ business, we do talk about this. But basically, uh, the way I would set up in, in a venue is have both speakers either side of the DJ, assuming the DJ is on the dance floor, pointing towards the center of the, of the dance floor. You don't want them pointing out at the crowd, you want to point towards the center of the dance floor. So you get a loud spot in the middle of the dance floor, but people around the edge and in the bar and at the seating areas and stuff can still talk and hear each other talking. Subwise, if you've only got one in front of your DJ booth, uh, it's not really too bad to have it underneath either of the speakers either, you know, because it might be a sub that's got a speaker pole and another speaker. That's fine. If you've got one speaker on a tripod and one speaker with the sub underneath it, that's fine. But if you've got two subs, one sub underneath each speaker is the way I go with that kind of setup. Uh, so HP Envy 360 says DJ Zan. We're talking about laptops here. Lots of you also talking about the XMG uh, as a uh, recommended laptop. Prism Live Studio is excellent. We're talking here about the software. I recommend uh, Larix Broadcaster, but there we go, someone else recommending Prism there. Uh, and it allows you to plug lots of funky things in. And John, look, John's got the, uh, I'll put it back up on the screen, the Camelot wheel there as your icon. So uh, there's the Camelot wheel coming up again. Uh, can you list some of the great mixture apps for instruments? No idea what you're talking about there, and I won't pretend I have. So if you are able to give me more info on that, maybe we can help you. Craig is tempted with the Reloop Buddy, the little controller we've got here, for backup and practice. Uh, then I saw the Digital DJ Tips video for the Newmark dj to go Then the WeGo 2, still struggling to decide. Want to use it with a tablet. You want to use it with a tablet, get this one, the little Reloop Buddy. Uh, it's got a tablet stand at the back, which you don't get on the other ones. Actually, you do get it on the WeGo 4, but the WeGo 4 is old now. Um, this is the one to get. It's a little bit more expensive, but we do like it. As I say, I'm probably going to be, if I've got the balls to switch away from the Prime Go, which I'm using at the moment for my live streams and switch to something even smaller, uh, I'll be using that all summer long. So I'll be able to give you some advice about that once I've had a, a play with it for a bit longer. Uh, any idea if Pioneer will come out with a controller with motorized vinyl platters? No idea, but I doubt it. Um, so uh, DJ Wardlow uh, is ready to buy a second smaller controller as a mobile wedding DJ. Well, uh, depends how much money you've got, how professional you want to be, or what you've got now. You know, I need to know your definition of a large controller. Uh, but all things being equal, uh, if you want a pro small controller, I'd go for the DJ707M from Roland, which is small and absolutely awesome. Frankly, it can be used as your main controller. But if you just want something very small, you know, DJ400 from Pioneer will do the job as a backup controller for sure. 
Uh, I have the Roland Go mixer. This is a little audio interface. I've been using it with the phone. Is it possible to have the same arrangement but use the phone, uh, but instead of the phone to use a GoPro camera? Well, the, 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 the Roland Go mixer is a audio mixer, so I'm not really sure what you're asking here. You know, the Roland Go is just a way of getting your audio into the, uh, into the camera. Sorry, into the um, into the phone or into the uh, uh, into the iPad or or or, or, phone, whatever, or or tablet, whatever you're using to go live on. So I'm not really sure what you're asking there. You know, in answer to your question, you can use GoPro cameras uh, if you want to go live uh, uh, using them, but you need an HDMI to to digital converter. I think I don't think you can yet plug the Roland the uh, the. Uh, the heroes directly into like a phone, a laptop, a, or a tablet. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. Uh, but I'm not too sure what you're asking there. Uh, DJ Mark in the dark, looking to get new turntables, looking at the Pioneer PLX 500 or Audio Technica LP 1240, or should I not waste my time and just go Technics? So uh, I wouldn't get the uh, the Pioneer PLX 500. I'd get the uh, Pioneer PLX 1000, or I would get the um, the Reloop RP 7000s. Uh, that said, the Audio Technica, Technica uh, LP 1240s are also great for the money. They're really, really good value. Uh, you know, they're a nice, heavy, direct drive turntable. Uh, the the Pioneer one you mentioned is uh, is, is lightweight, it's flimsy. Uh, certainly don't go Technics. You don't need to buy the Technics uh, 12, 1200 or 1210 Mark 7, not at all. They're not even a very good turntable. They're overpriced. Uh, so the ones I just mentioned, uh, the Audio Technica, Technica AT LP1240, uh, which looks like this. Uh, the uh, the Reloop RP7000, which we've reviewed. So head over to Digital DJ Tips uh, and type in RP7000 at the top to see our review of that. Uh, or let me show you something else here. Oh, I can't even see an RP7000 review. I was sure we'd reviewed it. But look, maybe we'll find out here. Go to all reviews at the top, go to DJ gear, select turntables. Uh, and then from there, you'll find a list of all the turntables that we've reviewed over time. Uh, there we go. Uh, we review the RP8000. It uh, doesn't look like we review the RP7000. No, there we go. We have. It just wasn't showing on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the search for some reason. I'll have to look into that. Uh, but there we go. There's a load of DJ turntables here for you to look at. Uh, but uh, to cut it short, I would go for the, uh, the audio, technic audio technical one you've already looked at, or the RP7000 from Reloop, or the Pioneer 1000, but don't go for the 500. So, Northwest Audio has got a hip replacement coming up. Good luck with that. But it uh, says I've got gigs on the 19th and the doc says I'll be good as long as I have a crew to load in and load out. Oh, seriously, Northwest Audio. A lot of people use a crew to load in and load out. Um, it's something that uh, is worth having, having a helper to help you with that stuff. So yeah, a lot of people do that for sure. Um, so good luck with that. Uh, I, I wish you wish you luck. Uh, obviously in a lot of pain at the moment, so be, I'm sure it'd be great for you to, to get uh, to get that sorted. Uh, so DJ Wardlow also looking for a second controller, or was it you that asked the question in the first place? If it is, you're giving more info now. Prime Go or Rolling 707M? Well, a Prime Go is not a controller, so do you want it to be working with a laptop or not? That's your first question. Uh, currently an MCX 8000 thousand is the main controller. I use Serato. If you use Serato, go for the 707M because it's also a Serato controller. Um, I saw in Toman that the MCX8000, talking about the MCX8000, is going to be back in stock soon. Does that mean that Denon are manufacturing them again? Don't know. I doubt it. I wouldn't go for the MCX8000 as a controller. I'd go for one of the Prime controllers if you want a Denon controller. I'd go for the Prime 4 instead. Uh, so Danny in Argentina, I like to play almost full tracks and mix two songs in the traditional way. And I'm not into applying frequent tricks and techniques. Is it wrong? considering actual trends. Just depends on what your audience wants, Danny. If your audience wants quick mixing and in out and stuff like that, then yeah, it's kind of wrong. If your audience is happy enough for you to uh, play the kind of old fashioned way where you play the whole song, do that. You know, there's an inverse relationship. Imagine a graph between energy level and the amount of the track you play. If you want to get the energy up, verse chorus out of there, verse chorus out of there, verse chorus out of there will build the energy up. But at the beginning of the night, you'd look a bit stupid DJing like that. So I think nowadays it's good to know how to do both, really. 
Um, so Peter has the reloop ready on pre-order. As you mentioned, it has no mic input. I like to get the mic in during live streams. Are there workarounds for taking on a mic when streaming with the ready? Well, yeah, there's a couple of workarounds. Uh, the easiest workaround is to get yourself a live mixer. So this is a live mixer. So a mixer like this, this is the PV, PV6BT, BT meaning Bluetooth. Uh, a mixer like this will let you plug your reloop ready that you were talking about, which I've got set up here. Uh, plug your, plug your reloop ready into the mixer and then from the mixer you can also plug in a microphone now you don't have to get one like this yamaha zenix by behringer i've got tiny ones about this big that'll do the job for you they cost about 50 dollars the little zenix ones uh, and you just plug your really ready in there and you plug a microphone in there as well and that'll let you get your uh, microphone in on the live stream it's an extra box to carry around actually i was telling you about these little cameras here these little Mevo cameras. One thing that I love about these is each camera has got a audio input on the back. So uh, you can plug in uh, an audio input. So ba basically if you've got two or three of these cameras, you can plug your DJ uh, console into one of them if your DJ console hasn't got uh, a microphone input like these ones haven't got. Uh, and you can then plug uh, your microphone into another one of the, mi of the cameras uh, and get around it that way. And then there's a little mixer on your phone uh, that lets you uh, mix all those things. These cameras are really, really clever, these little Mevo cameras. Uh, like I say, I'm going to be reviewing these soon because that's the preferred live stream setup that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do uh, when I'm doing four live streams on the road this July and August. Can't wait to do that. Uh, so, um, so yeah, there, there, there is a couple of workarounds there anyway, but getting a little live mixer would be the way that I, uh, that I would do that. Uh, so, um, next question live. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, only five minutes. I have to tell you that if we've missed any of your questions, and I know we have, because I have to scroll past loads of them, so I am sorry if I scroll past your questions. Uh, we will, my team will try and answer them, uh, certainly on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, so, Marco, which platform would you advise to beginner DJs to start sharing mix sets? SoundCloud, MixCloud, YouTube, etc. I would always recommend MixCloud because it's uh, the only public um, legal platform. That said, a lot of people put their mixes up on SoundCloud without any issues. Um, YouTube's a great place to share them if you've got video as well, but sometimes you will get your uh, streams banned or muted on YouTube because not all, not all tracks are cleared on there. Uh, and Martin's confirming that there you go, you can share your sets on Mixcloud. Uh, Driver John, this is a great question. Is there a difference between the Camelot key wheel and the tractor key wheel? So this is the Camelot key wheel one more time that we've been talking about. Uh, this is the Camelot key wheel. Uh, tractor has a different system. It just uses a different letter and number. It uses D and M instead of A and B for the numbers, um, for the letters. Uh, and I think apart from that, there's no difference. So no, there's no operational difference at all. Tractor just didn't want to use this system because Mixed in Key used it. I, don't th I think they didn't want to pay a license fee for it or something like that. But it's exactly the same the way it works, exactly the same. Um, how do you execute a smooth transition from two tracks that have significantly different BPMs? This is a brilliant question and it's one that you cannot answer on a live stream, uh, but I can answer it by sending you off to Digital DJ Tips uh, and looking at what we've got that will teach you this because really there's so many different ways of doing this and the best way of learning it is to, is to, is to take a course. Now, there's two or three courses that teach this. Uh, the first one I'd recommend, uh, if you're new to what we call power mixing, which is mixing beyond just simple beat mixing, is our Mixing Power Skills course. Uh, this introduces you to the concept and gives you loads and loads of mixes that you can take right out of the box and do, including massive BPM and, uh, and, key, and key and genre changes. So go look at Mixing Power Skills. But if you want to do kind of like more quick mixing, you want to use hip hop and soul and drum and bass and all that kind of stuff uh, and uh, pop music and that kind of thing, open format basically, you should take a look at DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions. DJ Angelo is a master of what you've just described and this course here will teach you everything about mixing all kinds of tempos, RPMs, genres, hip hop, house, R&B, Latin, pop, funk, rock and so on, clearly, cohesively, creatively all in one set, you know. Um, so this is the way to do it. Go get yourself a course uh, and learn that way um, because it's something I can't really teach you in a 
you know, in a chat like this. Um, so let's uh, grab our final question, I think, now of the day. Sorry, everyone, as I, get, as, as I say, uh, if I haven't been able to answer your question, we are not going to do a course for the Tractor SA Isabel because it's not made anymore. Uh, the power mixing course really does have some excellent tips, says Clay, so thank you very much for that. Uh, a good pair of PA speakers, here's our final proper question. A good pair of PA speakers for DJ practice at home, which also work for small gigs and house parties, I usually play bass heavy electronic music. So I'm gonna recommend you two types of speakers here. The first type of speakers I'm gonna recommend you here are from a company called um, Soundbox. Now these are not cheap which is why I'm going to give you a second, re second recommendation afterwards. So Soundbox speakers are, oh, they've got a new website, looks nice. Uh, they look like this, they look like PA speakers. They've got Bluetooth on them, which is, which is latency free. So you can literally DJ wireless without any latency, which no one else has. Uh, and they also work brilliantly as home speakers, but they're 999 a pair. Uh, sorry, they're 999 each. So these are not cheap, but we love these. They're battery powered as well. Uh, they're absolutely awesome and they're big, big things. Uh, but the other uh, systems we recommend are Dave systems. So LG systems have got a PA system called Dave. Let's have a look at their PA system here. So these are really nice budget, compact PA systems that look like this. Uh, and they've got different size. Uh, system. So this Dave G3 series, uh, they come from really pretty small. Uh, so the smallest one would be the Dave 10. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, this is easy to fit in your the back of your car, really easy to fit, fit in the back of your car, and also very easy to fit in your house. They don't really take up any more room than a, than a large computer speaker set up, but they're absolutely fine for, live, for, for playing live as well. Um, so this is one system that I would recommend. I don't know why that picture's not loading. Uh, staying it's staying all blurry but anyway you can see there uh, how they set up um, uh, so these work in your house as well as when you're out and about and in fact Steve Canueto my partner in crime at Digital DJ Tips has got a Dave 10 G3 system in his house which you can also take not only work for small gigs but you can also take to small gigs with him as well uh, people, we're done here today. I know there's lots and lots of questions I couldn't answer. Uh, but listen, uh, come back next week and get in early if you want your question to be answered. Uh, it's an absolute privilege to do these every, every week. So thank you very much to everyone who's come on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are. Uh, sorry about the fact that the title was wrong uh, on some of your platforms. I'm going to go away and correct it for posterity on our Facebook groups now. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please do subscribe, but also please do hit the share button. Uh, and if nothing else, just hit the like button for us. Now listen, on Sunday at exactly this time, Steve Canueto will be live on all channels apart from Facebook, uh, playing bumpy house music. Uh, and look, do tune in for Steve's live streams because he really goes to town on the technical stuff. You can really see what he's doing with his overhead cameras and he has great green screen stuff and all that. It's a lot of fun. So go and watch Steve's live stream on Sunday. I'll be back here on Tuesday and Thursday next week, uh, an hour earlier than now if you've joined us late, um, at 4 p.m. London, 11 a.m. Eastern. You can watch the replay of this on YouTube and on Facebook if you've joined us late. Uh, but for me, Phil, here at the Digital DJ Tips uh, Studios, thank you for joining us. And if you want to properly join us, just go there. And by going there, you get a free copy of our book that I talk about every week. So uh, if you want to become our latest member, it's free. After this broadcast, make the first thing you do a trip to djtips.co, slash join and join Digital DJ Tips. We'd love to have you as our latest member. As I say, it's free. Uh, so for me here, get good, get out there, make the moments. See you again very soon. Have a fantastic weekend. Until next time.